Hey there Excel users, welcome to my Excel Power Tips channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Excel to create a dynamic variable month sales projection forecast, or you can choose no projection forecast simply by using a drop down and you can select the number of months. So here we've got uh, sales relating to five teams, team A to team E, and the sales are going from January to December. And the latest sale is for August. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the different teams, they started their sales, they came into existence at different points of the year. For Team A and Team C, they started in January, and the other teams, they started later in January. So my drop-down, when you uh, want to find out what the forecast is to take into account for the remaining months, uh, future months, you can choose from the drop-down how many months you want a projection forecast uh, to be done for the uh, future months to be added to the actuals and uh, for each team. And you can do that in a variable way using the drop down. And I'll show you how it's done. Before I discuss how to create the projection forecasting formula, I'm gonna take some time to show you how to create the year-to-date average, which feeds into the forecasting formula. And you can use either average if or a combination of some count. And that gives you both the same result. So here we have uh, sales going from January to December and we've got sales going to August. And so the first method is uh, average if. So basically what we want is we want a year to day average of uh, all the sales we've got so far so for August uh, and then make it dynamic. So then when you have future sales for September, October, uh, the formula is automatically adjusted and the result is uh, adjusted also. So the first method is using average if. So we type average if here which is basically a conditional average, open brackets, and then click on the FX button here, function in the formula bar. That opens up the Excel helper for any Excel formula that you type in, and it shows you all of the components of the formula and all the arguments and what you need to put in. So the first argument is a range, and to be more accurate, that's the criteria range. So the criteria range is going to be the sales all 12 months. So click on this button there. So we'll just select all of the months. Click on the button there. And the next part is the criteria, which feeds into the criteria range, and that's all cells that are which have values of greater than or equal to zero. Also, zero has to be taken into account because you could have um, sales that are zero for a month, and that's also taken into account in the formula. So that's my point greater than equal to zero. Now the other thing is you normally put this in quotes uh, when you enter it in the formula in the cell, but when using the helper, uh, the helper puts in the quotes in for you just to save you time. When I click away from it, you'll see that Excel puts the criteria in quotes. Now the average range doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the criteria range, but in this case it is. You can have it different. But for our needs, the average range is going to be different, uh, sorry, the same as the Criteria range, click on the button there, and again we select all 12 months. I'm just going to zoom in on this so you can see it better. And then click on OK. So you can see it's 5000. And uh, let's see if this works. Uh, let's highlight all the months for August and see what Excel comes up in the status bar at the bottom. Yeah, it's coming up with 5,000 as the average for the eight months, and that matches. The other method is using a combination of sum and count if for method two. So let's do the second part of method two, which is the count if. We do count if here, open brackets. The range is criteria range, so that's gonna be the same as a 12 months of sales. And the criteria is greater than or equal to zero, just like the average. So this is basically showing all sales are greater than or equal to zero. So what's it coming with? It's coming with eight. Ignore the currency, but that's correct. If you look at the number, focus on the numbers eight. And if we put a new uh, sale for September, let's say we'll put nine thousand. It's showing that there's nine sales, so we know that's correct. Let's undo that. So. The other part of method two is now doing the sum. So what we're doing is we're putting in the count and then we're dividing it into the sum of all sales for all 12 months. And then we just select the same 
going to sell this. We divide that by 20. And I'm just going to zoom in on that again. And click on the tick mark. So again, it's 5,000 is correct. So here, uh, there's two methods and they both come up with the same result to give you the year-to-date average. Let's put in a value for September. Let's see if this is working dynamically. So let's say we've got for sale for September or 4,000. And it's coming up with a year day average of 4,889. Now let's now highlight all the sales up to September. And it's saying in the formula status bar is 4,889. So uh, that's confirmation that it works, both methods. Going back to the dynamic forecasting sheet containing the five teams, team A to team E. Uh, for team A, uh, which started in January, uh, we're going to be expecting sales uh, for the future months for September and October, not for November and December. And that's also going to be the same for team C. For team B, which started in April, we're going to be expecting sales up to December. And then for team D, we start in June, we're expecting sales up to December. And finally, for Team E, we, they were on the campaign for sales uh, only for the month of August, and we're not expecting any more sales for the rest of the months. So the grey cells are for those months where sales are not expected, and for the yellow ones uh, where uh, the sales are going to be expected. So the year-to-day average we discussed earlier, uh, I've used the average if method to calculate the year-to-day average. So that's calculated in uh, this column here. Now. If we did a projection of 12 months and we simply multiply the year to year average by 12 and then get the result, that will give you an overestimate of the forecast, the projection. That's going to be incorrect because that assumes that the team was in existence from January and also to December. The sales were expected from January and December, which is not the case. Now, the correct forecast is done this way. So, first of all, for the projection months, um, this is a drop down. And that drop down consists of either no projection or months going from 1 to 12. To create the drop down, what we do is we go into uh, data, then we go into data validation, and data validation again. And then in the data validation dialog box, in the settings tab, there's an allow drop down, and you click on list. And then for the source, uh, these are the values you type in. So it's either no projection or the months 1 to 12. So these are the projection months and these are the drop down values. So the correct forecast formula works this way. So I'm just going to zoom in on, on this as well. So it works it, this way. So from the drop down, if you choose no projection, then all it does, it does a sum of the team's values for all 10 months. So that's um, uh, all the sales for the actuals. So it could be any sales, could be up to 12 months of sales. And, but if you choose a variable month, then what that does, it sums up the actual known values and then works out the average of those known values using the average if formula and then multiplies it by the variable months that you select from the drop down. So let's say for team A, um, we're going to be expecting sales uh, for future month for September, October. So from the drop down, we select two. The forecast is 48,000. Now notice how different it is to the incorrect forecast of 58,000. So that's nearly 10,000 down. And then for team B, we're expecting sales for the remaining four months. So that's correct. And for team C, uh, we're expecting only for two months. So, so November, December are not going to be um, relevant. So it's just going to be September, October. So we just choose two from the drop down. And for team D, that's four, that's correct. Now finally for team E, they were on the campaign just for the month of August. So we're not expecting any more sales. So you can choose no projection in this case. And so as you can see, uh, the formula um, takes that into account and it's only counting uh, the one uh, for August. So notice the difference in the projection for 12 months, a fixed projection for 12 months, which is incorrect, about 343,000. 
and you compare that to the correct forecast 193,000 using the variable months projection forecast formula and that's the correct forecast so that's how you collate a dynamic variable month sales projection forecast using this formula thanks for watching and watch out for my next video